Hi, Kim. Welcome back to FACE. Great to have you back here. And if you unmute. Yep. Can you hear me? There you are. Hi. Uh, hey, how are you? Happy Good. New Year. How are you? Same Good. to you. So, now, just to figure out, oh, my video. There we go. Okay. So I even shaved because I know you like to be on camera. Uh, <laughs> Kim, what a great call you Hi. made last time you were with us. You said, I know it's, not, quote, I know it's not the bottom, but I'm buying TLT here. And you know what? <laughs> it was very close to the bottom within a handle or so. So uh, yeah. congr congratulations on that call. Thank you. What do you, I'm looking how did you trade it? How did I, you trade it? Now. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think I bought it around 82 or 83, whatever that, you know, yeah, when that was near the low. Pretty far down. Yeah. And, and yeah. I bought, I started buying it at 85 and, um, but I got out at 95, you know, okay. as interest rates are like trading, like meme stocks. <laughs> okay. There's they such a, yeah, there's just such a huge fluctuation. So I figured once I, you know, made some good money on it, I would get out. Yeah. That's to me, where it wasn't I a long-term it... hold. It was a trade. Right. Okay. So, uh, you mind if we stay with it, examine it a little bit, and sure. tell us uh, what you're seeing? So, um, you know, we read after. I have to you put know, my glasses on here to uh, see this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here. I'll... Does that help? All right. Anyway, yes. so we peaked at 100. I got out early, too. Um, yeah. And, and I think so 100 had... was a good target for sure. Yeah. That's where so it broke I... down. Here's a big question for me. Now, you know, we had that very strong employment number, and this was 61.8 up here. And why can't we have something like this from here that could take it back to 90? The question is, mm -hmm. is this corrective and you buy a good breakdown at 90 or 89, something like mm -hmm. that, just retracing this? But if I look at something like uh, the weekly for a bear argument, it we have two drives here. And one of my favorite patterns is a three drive to a bottom formation, which means one's out, there's one to go. I lean more mm -hmm. towards this as a buy and then we go again, but I keep an open mind that um, sometimes it's more than one touch of a return line. It's two, yeah. two, it's two divergences. So are you just leaving it alone here for now till it presents yes. itself? Okay. Yep. Um, in my four hundred one k, in my four hundred one k, um, I have a small bond position, just because okay. I think it's always smart, and you know I think I have five percent, and I'll keep it there. And if it goes down, then I might increase that to ten percent. But I can't specifically buy TLT. I have to buy a bond fund okay. in my four hundred one k. Okay. So, uh, so I. All right, so it's right, yeah. But as far as trading, it's uh, I don't know right now, and you just wait for things to set up, and it's uh, you don't have to trade both sides of the market. Uh, that was an opportunity down there. Now it's more of a two-way trade, right? Yeah, I mean, I won't like go shorted, or I and I don't short stocks or any indexes unless I'm like buying puts. Or okay. maybe, you know, using futures as a hedge. Um, so otherwise, I wouldn't particularly short it. Okay. But I so, would, I could, right. I could short the futures. Right. That's how okay. I would use it. But I don't, the problem for me is I'm not, you know, I, my strength isn't in the bond market. I just saw an opportunity on that. And then okay. once it went, then I got out. Right. Your strength is so, uh, uh, in equities, right? Yes. And yeah. uh, you and you have some. Pretty and I active... like and I love you and I love futures. OK. Yeah. I saw you were day trading silver every time it broke towards uh, 2240 or scalping. Well, now it. it's now it now it broke down. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, do you, you so you just day trade futures because uh, I think. Silver... Uh, or, or swing trade it. I mean, so if, you said it you broke know, down. You... Would you short it on a breakdown, silver? Uh, I haven't honestly looked at it today. So, okay. I mean, remember, we're yeah. West Coast time. Yeah, I know. 
I, I think there's lots of geopolitical risk. And so because of that, I think metals are, you know, I think that silver and gold are down right now because interest rates are running again. And that seems to correlate from what I've seen. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about like silver having a major breakdown right now. And I always like having a little bit of metal position in my portfolio. Um, And I can add to it, you know, so I have a small micro position on right now and I can add to it if it keeps going down because I think there's geopolitical risk, which to me means metals get a boost. Okay. And I don't have any metals in my portfolio. So okay. it's always good so to do have you, how about a the shares? Do you ever trade miners? They've been they've been I, I weaker than to, gold. Yeah. Yeah. I I I used to um I used to trade GDX and what's the silver one? S L J or S I L J. These S I L J. Yeah. I used to trade those a few years ago. I just I don't know. I don't I don't watch how they move anymore. So I haven't paid attention to it. Okay. Like a couple of years ago, there was quite a bit of options flow on those. And I saw that going out. I use bar chart or um black box stocks and I saw a lot of options flow on them. So I bought calls and bought some shares. Okay. But as of now, I just really only trade the futures. I like the futures because I feel for myself that I it takes less capital, right? So I just trade the micros. It takes less capital. And then I can slowly add to my position. Okay. Um, or I can get out. Yeah. That, yeah, there's always that option. So I mean, the 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 metals, you know, to me, my you know read on them is they move up and down, and silver is the most volatile of the. I mean, between silver and gold, so that can move wildly in a day. Like when um, Chairman Powell uh, came out on Wednesday, silver plunged, and then I bought it. And also, what was the other day? The day the data came out on Friday, it was like the silver futures were like at 23.25 and they dropped to, I think, like 22.55 and then bounced from there. Right. Yeah. So people. So been I did defending, day trade that that day. Yeah. People have been defending the area it finally broke down from. So uh, mm-hmm. let me get to your wheelhouse. Um, does it bother you? That with all the new all-time highs that we've had in, you know, especially the MAG-7, that Apple hasn't made a new high for quite some time. Um, You know, they were able to defend 180 uh, after earnings. But this, you know, uh, S&Ps, the last time we were down here, were way above it. So where the Mm S&Ps are now and where Apple is, to me, it's demonstrating a lot of relative weakness. Uh, yeah. Would it be a put candidate for you? Because I'm looking to buy some if we get up to 190 this week or 192. To buy some puts if yeah. we get up there? Yeah. I I own the stock. Okay. And so the way, the way I would trade it, I actually have a covered call on right now. Okay. At, look up at my screen. I have it on at... 185 right here. So um, I put that on right after earnings and I didn't cover all my shares. I just covered a third of them. Okay. And then if it runs to me, I would put a hedge wrapper on my stock. So, you know, sell a call, buy a yeah. put. I think it's called a caller. I call it a hedge wrapper as we've talked about before. Cause it's like a little present when it goes your way. Yeah. You know, but it, like it's, um, I think their iPhone sales were really weak. They had some, yeah, you know, China. news about the iWatt, yeah, China. And I think that was the third quarter that their sales were weak. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. And also they had the the news on the um iWatch where they pulled a bunch of those off the market because of some not copyright, but trademark infringement. Was it trademark or oh yeah. With the blood blood oxygen. Right. Um, app, which I yeah. love that app, by the way. All right. <laughs> I always like to see what my blood oxygen's at. Does it change when so, you're trading? Does I haven't paid attention. 
I haven't paid attention <laughs> when I'm trading. That, that'd be a good thing to well, look at. It, let me anyway, add, see the correlation. Let's do an, ex, let's do an experiment. Put on 10 <laughs> big S&Ps today and monitor your <laughs> your, yeah, your blood yeah. oxygen. Well, I, I, I told you my husband did that before with the right. NQ. Ten, right. ten of those. And that was a little stressful. So I should have checked it then. You know, I've, I also <laughs> gathered from your stream by some people that you repost that you think the market's pretty stretched up here. Yeah, Am for I right? sure. But you know, when, yeah, but yeah. when markets are stretched, I mean, they can I think keep we've stretching. all learned that they yeah. can keep stretching. And so it's, you know, I have a small short position, um, you know, through the futures on the small caps because they've been the weakest. And oh, yeah. just like with the silver, you know, when it hits that 2000 inch area, it tends to go down. And when that makes moves, you know, you, you make, it makes big moves, right? It's like 40, 50 points. Yeah. So you can capture some of that by selling the future. So I do have some short uh, micro small caps on. Okay. And you know, the thing was, is uh, I was listening to Bloomberg and a lot of their analysts were so bullish on small caps. You know, it's like the rotation trade and the S and P yeah. equal weight is the thing that's going to go up and the Russell. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. everyone's saying this, mm, that feels not right. People so. saying it was going to double. Okay. But yeah. so once we had the breakout, uh, it will not double as long as uh, I just want to show you this. Um, tell me what you think. So it took all of the stock market strength that we've had since October for KRE just to get back to, if you look left, like all traders should, you'll see that mm -hmm. this was a major breakdown and this looks corrective. Uh, I, I don't think mm -hmm. the market gets an all clear unless we close back above this 52 level in the KRE and I don't see it. Um, it's got to hold 44. But this is a big part of the Russell. So if yep. this is in trouble, uh, I think you have something with the uh, pullback in the Russell. So uh, you ever trade the uh, any ETFs on the regional banks uh, or I don't. money centers? No. You have no view. Do you no. have a view on the financials? You're mainly tech. I, I mean, I I do. I own City. I love Citibank. Okay. All right. And so, I mean, part of it is I actually, you know, they, their relationship with Costco. So Costco is my biggest position. And um, I love using the city card app. They have a brand new CEO. They're doing some really innovative. So I know the buy now pay later is something that's, you know, the new thing and you've got a firm and a lot of the, and PayPal and a lot of these other companies doing it. Well, city's doing it too. So, for example, if I buy something at Costco, City will ask me on my cost uh, on my Citibank card, "Do you want to do buy now, pay later?" Essentially, and it'll show me all the things that I can put on buy now, pay later after I've charged them. So it's not having you make that decision up front, and it's oh. giving you thirty days to be able to do that, which I love. And if you're buying, um, using your city card, the Costco city card to make Costco purchases, there's no fee, no interest for, I think they'll let you go four months. Um, on other, like if I buy a Nordstrom purchase, for example, they'll charge a fee to do that, yeah. but they're allowing you to make the decision after, and I'm not seeing other companies doing that. So they have this okay. whole section on my Costco card, my Costco city, where I have like 10 items if I wanted to buy now, pay later. Well, yeah. why not do that? I mean, take my capital, save more during the month and spread it out over four months, especially if it's zero interest, zero fees. Okay. Um, so and so just I whole... really like that. All right. How about the, does the chart have anything to do with you liking it? Or is it mainly well, the chart? My card? husband's my I do look at charts, but my husband's the chartist. But yes, okay. that looks good to me. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> it's breaking all right. out. <laughs> all right. So uh I've noticed uh you run some uh 
they used to be called uh, what uh, when it was Twitter, where you have groups meeting uh, during market hours. Uh, what's that called oh, again? Spaces. 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 Yeah. So yes. uh, you you yeah. have a you have a nice sized group that you collaborate with every week. Is that true? Yeah, so yes, okay. I, it's Wolf Financial Gav, and he runs about. 20 to 40 spaces a week. And I'm usually wow. on, I'd say five to 10 of those a week. Okay. So, and we have a, we have a women, we have a woman's uh, of wall street that is on Friday mornings and it's only women and Gav and Wolf. Okay. And okay. that's really fun. You have some great women like Julie Cordova, Aisha, um, and Marie, I mean, some really good traders and investors are on there. And I know I missed a lot of people. Sorry. But um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great, it's on at 6.15 in the morning on Fridays. Okay. So uh, tell us what you're, you know, what you're doing right now and how you came into the new year and uh, what you're looking for. Uh, ideas that you're executing now or looking to execute. So right now I'm just holding steady and just maintaining my positions. Um, my favorite stock is Microsoft. Uh, I mean, one of my favorites because I love the CEO when you, uh, so I'm also a count, uh, mental health counselor and um, a lot of my clients are in tech and my husband also coaches soccer here and a lot of his clients are tech. And so Anyone that you talk to loves working at Microsoft and they love the CEO and he's been so innovative, you know, innovative. I remember in like 2015, Wall Street really disfavored, you know, once Balmer left and yeah. Sate Nadella took over, Wall Street was really sour on their business model, moving away from the software, moving towards the cloud, because no one really knew what the cloud was at that time. And they were, you know, I remember Wall Street saying, you know, this isn't the right move. You can't make money on that. Well, now, you know, look yeah. at how big the cloud's gotten. Also, there with aren't Microsoft enough data too. centers to uh, support it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you, you so look I at any of those? The, did, go ahead. Sorry, Kim. Go ahead. I started buying the stock um, in 2017, I believe, when it was about $80. Nice. And, yeah. you know, just have held it and added to it from there. And plus, um, I also work at a university and I'm a professor of psychology. And so we use Microsoft Teams. A lot of businesses are using Microsoft Teams. And I love the collaboration that you have with Microsoft Teams. So you can have different work groups and, you know, upload files, share files, collaborate on files, similar to Google. And, uh, but I feel that Microsoft Teams is less clunky than Google, even though I own Google stock as well. Okay. Uh, you know, very interesting approach. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much technical and correlating things to what's happening in other markets. Look at that you, breakout on Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, I, that's worth putting your glasses on for that one. So, uh, know. you know, maybe we have something like, you know, maybe that uh, this was what, uh, 196 to 345. That's 180. So uh, 500. Would you book yeah, any? I mean, it, what would be? I know, I know you love the CEO, but can't you love the CEO and say we got near five hundred, sell some shares well, and not I, and, and not I, tell I, him? Yeah, <laughs> I I keep track of my shares on a um, site called Savvy Trader, so everyone can see my portfolio. Oh, cool! Um, and it shows what you trade. And it books it at the time that you post that trade. So if you like sell shares and you don't put it on there and the stock falls, it it will look like you didn't make money on it, right? So you have to, you know, go and book it right away. But everyone can see my portfolio and what I'm trading, um, except for options or futures. They don't have that on there. Yeah. But I did sell some shares at about 390. I I sold yeah. about uh 20 percent of my position which oh yeah 
Now okay. I'm kind of reg- why? Now I'm regretting a lot. <laughs> why? What, what, what happened? I felt like it was, ha- I, huh? I just, I, you know, Microsoft has tended to pull back and I'm just like, I've made a good profit. All nothing right. like you said, nothing wrong with trimming here. It was approaching $400. It wasn't breaking it. through. And All so right. I'm like, and then it, you know, it did. It actually, at the time, that seemed like a small, smart move because it broke back down to 360, I believe. So if you look, okay. there is that little point where it went up to 390 and then it broke back down again. Right here. Probably like two months ago. Yeah. There you are. So, you put, yeah. And, and it did. It pulled back to 360 and then we had the breakout. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. all right. So well, I guess, you know, could have re added it at that point, but I thought it would break down to about 345. That's what I was looking for, 340 yeah. or so. Yeah. All right. That's kind well, of where it had broken out of. Yeah. Who was the uh, famous guy, uh, Peter, who uh, I forgot his last name. Uh, Everyone followed him. And he really talked about knowing the companies and understanding the companies that you're buying, that if you like the product. And uh, do you know who I'm talking about? He was uh, very famous. Peter Schiff or Lynch? Lynch? No. no, I know. I do know who you're talking about. He wrote it in a book. And that, yeah. that honestly is my philosophy. I mean, yeah. and, and to buy what your kids know. So like, I remember my son, he was like maybe seven years old or maybe eight years old. He's like, mama, Netflix, Netflix. And at that time they were just a video company, remember? And their stock yeah. was $4. Right. And I didn't buy it at $4. And I think of all the times my kids were using these products like Celsius. My daughter was drinking Celsius, S-C-E-L-H, like it was going out of style about two years ago. Before that stock, I think it was a $10 stock at the time. Yeah. And now it's, you know, it's split. Um, they so they sponsored the indoor I, track meet. Uh, they were the sponsor of the new, the beginning of the, track season indoor track season leading up to paris uh, celsius was a sponsor yeah, they're yeah they're, they're, big they're in europe now i've bought a few of their shares now but i mean i you know if you buy what you use and know so my next stock stories. and i know a lot of people i know a lot of people are disfavorable on this stock is etsy and the reason why i like etsy if um this is like a buy for my daughter because she uses depop all the time which is Etsy bought Depop and it's like a vintage, you know, or resale site, but she has learned the best business and marketing skills through this site. Like it's basically like you're getting a, taking a business marketing class with, you know, out really without really realizing that you're doing so Um, the way she, you know, edits her clothes that she puts up there and arranges them and has to like keep track of like what she's selling and the dollars that she's making. So that's my investment for her. Oh, wow. So parents take note. That <laughs> wisdom. E-T-S-Y. <laughs> now I'm not right. saying that stock's going anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah. And I know it's had like, you know, their sales, people don't think like they can really with, you know, because Etsy is like where artists and craft crafters, you know, put their products and, you know, independent people that aren't like selling in regular retail stores. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so there's, it, it's not, I don't think people, I, I haven't heard the street favorable on it, but I'm looking at this as long-term I'm buying what my kids know and yeah. what they're using. Okay. Um, so We'll see. I'm just pocketing it, you know, putting it, tucking it away, not paying attention to it every day. Well, I, I hope you have a great year, Kim. It's a very interesting Thank approach you. that you take to the markets. And um, I hope one day you're getting great stock tips from your grandchildren. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a, it's always a pleasure. I always enjoy talking to you, Kim. And uh, uh, I'm a fan. What could I say? I, I think that, I'm a fan you, of you. you know, that you and your husband and your children, uh, the apple, you know, sounds like your daughter is a clone of you and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So everyone follow Kim at Mama Investor. Thank you. 
and and uh, check out her spaces if you you know you want to hear how it really could be simplified things and you can check life. out my portfolio you could check out my portfolio on savvy trader savvy Just trader Google are you savvy doing trader. that do you want to manage money kim or uh, that's not your no. what you're interested in. Just no. my own money. <laughs> All right. Just my, um, I think there was a day and age where I did want to manage money, but, yeah. you know, yeah. that probably yeah. not it so complicates. Much it complicates your life. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So keep it simple. Kim, thanks very much. I hope this is one of your best years Thank for you. you and your family. All righty. Thank you. It's always great right. seeing you. Thanks for having right. me. Follow Kim. Bye. At Mama Investor. See Bye. you later. Uh, thank you, bye. Kim, and, and uh, bye-bye. And thank everyone you. else, so you could join the team in 15 minutes on the Morning Edge. Uh, hope you enjoyed Kim. She's good. Follow her. Yeah, family of traders. Yeah. Okay, Laura. Yeah, maybe you could jump in with the uh, women's group on Friday. I tried, but they bounced me out of there. Anyway, so have a great trading day, everyone. King Dollar. King dollar, king dollar. Let's see. 105 looks like a layup now. So I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Adios. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Uh -huh.